Hey team, we're back at it again in Transaction Desk, and today we're going to be focusing on Authentisign layouts. Creating a layout when you frequently apply the same signing fields and markups to the same documents in the same locations can be a huge game changer when you're on the go and you need to move swiftly and get signings sent out to your consumers so they can go ahead and sign those documents and get them back to you promptly. Creating a layout enables you to set up those signing fields and markups in advance and then apply them to a document with a single click, saving you that valuable time manually setting up each field and markup on every document every time. You can update, copy, or delete a layout at any time after you create one, and you can apply it to a signing as soon as you create it. But here's the catch your layouts must have a minimum of one document one signer type, which is a participant, and one signing field. So let's go ahead and get in there. On the left toolbar, you're gonna to go down into signings. From here, on the right upper hand corner, there is an arrow that will pull out a right toolbar. You must be in signings for this right toolbar to be exposed. Click on layouts. From here, any layouts you have created will show up on your layouts signing list. To add a new layout, you're gonna click on the add button here on the right hand side. Go ahead and name this something that you're gonna remember. I'm going to be using the disclaimer today. Let's go ahead and click save. Once you save, it's going to jump you into AuthentiSign. You're going to need to select a document. You can pull blank documents from Tennessee Realtors website under members in forms on the fly. For the disclaimer notice, you're going to need the document number 304. Once here, we're gonna scroll down to where their signing is going to be needed. Now you're like, Kayla, when I take my signings into AuthentiSign, it always knows where to map my signatures. Well, it does when the document or the form already identifies if this is a buyer, a seller, a listing or a selling agent, etc. In this case, as you can see, the disclaimer identifies either a client or a customer. It doesn't know which signing signature it needs to map to the document, but you can create a layout to tell it where it needs to map to. On your right hand side, you're going to click on your toolbar here. Because we don't know if this disclaimer notice is going to be signed by a buyer or a seller, we wanna make sure in our edit layout name on the top, we identify this as a buyer. So that way you're applying the right layout when needed. From your drop down here, you're only going to see buyer one, buyer two, et cetera. This is because this is not particular to any transaction or any particular contact. Simply click on buyer one. We're going to click the sign here button and drag it across and drop it in its respective place. Now my settings are set up to default to automatically have the date and the timestamp. If yours does not show up, you can simply click on the yellow block and it will change your toolbar on the right hand side. You can toggle the date and the time on or off. Once you toggle them on, your save as defaults will be black, and when saved, they will turn gray. So every time moving forward that you're going to drag and drop a signature block, it will remember your defaults that you want it to also drop the date and the time. Now notice my date and time are now backwards. Depending on which toggle button you select, it will place either the date or the time first or second. You can also click and drag the date and the time into the lines below. Some brokers prefer that you have this set up in this manner. Now we don't know if we're gonna have one or two buyers on this, but we do know that if there were a second buyer, we wanted to also map the signature. So go ahead and toggle to buyer two, click the sign here and drag down, and place your date and your time where you'd like them. When complete, click 
click the back button on the upper right hand corner and click save. You're going to do this exact same thing for sellers. Once AuthenDesign opens, click drag and drop into your document setting. We're gonna scroll down to the signing signatures, open up your toolbar, and from here on your dropdown, you're going to select seller one. Click your sign here, drag and drop, and go grab seller number two. Now, if you wanted your date and time, you can move them as well. And back and save. Now, notice you're going to have your disclaimer notice here. And this one's identifying for buyer signatures. And this disclaimer here is identifying for seller signatures. The next form that we're going to do is going to be the wire fraud. We're gonna do one for buyer and one for seller, just like the disclaimer. The wire fraud document is the 308. Open up your toolbar. From here, you're gonna have initials on line 11, so you're gonna drag your initial block over. When I let go of my initial block, it's reminding the document that I need a date and time, but this form doesn't require it on these lines, so we can go ahead and click and delete. Drag your sign here to the bottom. And notice this only has a date, so we can remove the time by simply clicking and hitting the trash can to delete. Now the signature is bleeding over the text above, so if I click the yellow block, I can shrink this down so the signature is a little bit smaller and it will yield below the text above. Let's grab buyer number two, bring in their initials, remove the date, remove the time, and drag their signature in as well. And shrinking theirs down so it fits in the space. Perfect. Once you're done, click back and save. Do the exact same thing for your sellers. Click add document, bring in your 308. Open your toolbar. We're going to grab our seller one. Initials on line 11. Remove the date, remove the time. Drag the sign here down below. Shrink your signature block. And then jump on over into seller number two. Now, notice, in order for my tools to come back, I have to click on the screen. So click anywhere on the screen and then your toolbar will come back. If you don't see it, it means that something is selected down here and you're modifying that specific seller block, whether it's blue or yellow. And notice as I click on the yellow, the yellow changes to the side. Okay, so I want my blue initials here. Delete, delete, and done with the seller one. Back and save. So now I have my disclaimers, my wire fraud, and the next one that I like to add in is the confirmation of agency. Now, why the confirmation of agency, you ask? Well, the confirmation of agency, which is the 302, is going to have the seller's information and the listing information on the left-hand side. This document is often uploaded in the MLS docs, However, you do have to include your buyer's information on the right-hand side. So instead of manually doing this every single time, you can apply layouts. Let's go ahead and click on our tools. And we're going to utilize the signer fields here that says full name. We're gonna click and drag this to the top. Now, same concept as your signing blocks. You can click and you can make these bigger or smaller or use your scale bar on the side. I'm going to go grab buyer number two. 
full name and drag. Now I need their signature, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag these down here. You don't need the time. You can drag your date over if you like your date to the side. And you can make these smaller so they fit in here a little better. Let's go grab buyer one, bring them in, get rid of that time and bring the date over. And you can drag this down, make it a little smaller. Now you need to add yourself as the selling agent. So go find selling agent, they're in alphabetical order. We need our signature down here. And then we need our full name here on the licensee line. Now, depending on your status for the transaction, this checkbox can be drug and dropped. If you have a buyer's representation agreement, you can check off the box here for designated agent. If you're a facilitator or you are a transactional broker, you're not an agent for either party, there's no buyer's representation, you would check this box. You can also place it here for disclosed dual agency if that is allowed within your firm, or if the buyer is unrepresented, you can place the checkbox here. Now, when you have this box here, you wanna make sure that you identify which one this is, just in case you have multiple confirmation of agency layouts that you want to include. Now, down below, it's asking for the selling company. So in order to have this blink for you to type on, you're gonna use the text line and drag and drop this here. When you click on the text line, it's gonna give you little buttons to expand this on out. Now you wanna make sure that the require block is filled out, it's toggled on. If it's toggled off, it will not blink and require the selling agent to fill something out in that block. So we wanna require this. We also wanna make sure that the transparent background is toggled on reason for that if this block was slightly over as you can see you can kind of see the line below but if i toggle this the line goes away so you want transparent background so you, that way we can see that just in case it bleeds over okay when finished you can go ahead and save this one as well so back and save perfect now we have all of our layouts scheduled here let's go ahead and apply this to a transaction Click on your house to get into your transactions and open up your training transaction folder or whichever one you want to apply this to. I've already added these forms into my training folder here, but we're gonna go ahead and open up the disclaimer notice. Now you can enter into AuthentiSign by being into a form and clicking on the pen up here on the top. You can also enter into AuthentiSign if you have the AuthentiSign widget down below by clicking on the Add AuthentiSign here and labeling this. We're going to pretend we're doing an offer packet. Now this is going to jump you back into AuthentiSign. Now notice you have all of your tools in your toolbar off to the side because you're no longer in signing layouts. You are now in AuthentiSign. We're going to add our document or our form. Here are all the documents that we want to apply. If we click here on signers, we can add participants from the transaction or from our contacts. Because this is a training one, I don't have any in the transaction, but I can add from the top, the contacts. We're gonna go ahead and bring in Fred and Wilma. So there's Wilma. And let's grab Fred again. He did not come in. There's Fred. All right, now notice it's saying, hey, there's some signatures on here. Who's who? Do you want Wilma to be the first buyer or do you want Wilma to be the second buyer? And you can select these and um, place their signatures where you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and put Fred and Wilma in. I'm gonna sign the signature blocks. And what this is going to do is it's going to place their signatures on this purchase and sale agreement here because it's identifying this as a buyer required signature. Now you also wanna make sure you add yourself into this as well. The reason for that is remember, we had the document for the confirmation of agency that was lighting up green 
which is going to require us to fill something out. So on selling agency, for the selling agent, you want to select your name and assign the signature blocks. Okay. We're going to go ahead and toggle on the date and the time here for Fred and Wilma's signature on this 401 and jump on down to the disclaimer. Wah, wah. The disclaimer doesn't have signatures. What happened? Well, what happened is it's not recognizing that there's a buyer that's needing to sign here. So we're going to click on our layouts button here on the right hand side and click layout options. From there, simply click apply layout. It's recognizing that there are four documents in the document layout. It's going to ask you off to the right hand side, which layout do you want to apply? We're going to click on the bar here next to the disclaimer notice and it's going to give you a drop down. Go ahead and select the one that you created for your disclaimer for buyers. Next, you're going to do the same for your wire fraud and the same for your confirmation of agency for designated agency. Once everything's complete, click assign signature layouts. Boom. There's your buyer one, buyer two, buyer one, buyer two as well as here. And the confirmation of agency has went ahead and placed everybody exactly where they need to be. So you can go ahead and click next and send this bad boy off for signatures to all of the respective parties. When complete, it will come back as a final signed document. And that's it, my friends, on how to do authenticize layouts and apply them for your signings. I look forward to seeing you at the next one. As always, Leave me a comment if you have questions. See you soon.